Thank you so much for joining us. It's always an honor to have you uh, on our Evangelive the Verse. This is an initiative to study a verse every day, helping you in your spiritual life because sometimes the Bible is overwhelming. You have so many scriptures saying so many things that sometimes are even contradictory. But what if you study a verse every single day, understanding exactly what the Lord Jesus is speaking to your heart? And that's what we're trying to do here. And today I'm not alone. I have my brother. Roderick and we'll be studying together. Let him introduce himself, uh, Roderick. Uh, I'm Roderick and today I am very honored uh, to be part of this Evangel of the Verse. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. Now, Roderick, what are we studying today? Um, our title today is Anathema. Watch, stand, be strong. Watch, stand, be strong. At the end of this verse, we hope that we will all be standing and strong in the Lord Jesus and not be anathema. Now, what is this anathema? What does anathema mean? What's interesting is that anathema, if you search on Google, and I was quite surprised, it means damn it. It's still used in the Greek vocabulary today. But the biblical definition is anathema actually means a thing devoted to destruction or judgment from God. Paul mentions the word in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse number 22. You want to read that for us? Yeah, uh, it says, If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. Wow. If any man does not love the Lord Jesus, let him be a thing devoted to God. Let him be accursed. Let him be cursed. Basically, that's what the text is saying. Yeah. Now, this is so far one of the most thought-provoking verses I personally have come across. The Corinthians, like we all do, uh, they knew that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. They knew that he, He's the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world, because they had, they had listened to John saying that uh, this is the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. They knew that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's found where? In uh, John 3 verse 16. Now I have a question for you, Roderick, right? Yeah. Jesus is the savior. Jesus was given that whosoever believes in him should not perish. Question, what will happen to those who do not believe in him? The opposite will happen, they will perish. They will perish. And it's very clear when you read uh, in Proverbs. Do you want to continue that for us? Proverbs chapter 8 from uh, verse 34? Yeah, from verse uh, 34 it reads, Blessed is the man that heareth me, mm. watching daily at my gates. Watching. Very important word. We're going to come back to that. Yeah. Um, it continues, waiting the post of my doors. Waiting at the post of my doors. Yeah. 35. Mm -hmm. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. 36. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. Mm. All, they, all they that hate me love death. And wow. this is wisdom speaking here, which is Jesus. Jesus Christ. How do you know that? How do you know that? Pull up the verses. It's First Corinthians chapter one and verse thirty. Oh. I missed one verse. <laughs> there it says, "But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption." So, if I read anything in the Bible that speaks of wisdom, when it says "get wisdom," well, get Jesus. Because wow. Christ is wisdom. He grew exactly. in wisdom, in stature. So this is very interesting, like you pointed out. This is this is an explanation of the verse anathema. Yeah, and here it's saying at the end of the verse, yeah. all, that all they that hate me love death. Mm -hmm. This is Jesus speaking. Right. It's wisdom, right? So Correct. all that hate Jesus mm -hmm. love death. It's almost like the opposite of Jesus. I mean, this is no brainer. If you read First uh, John chapter 5, I believe, in verse number 7, or somewhere there, yeah. it says that there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and all these uh, are one. Yeah. And they all have one testimony, uh, that Jesus Christ 
is life and in him there is life who he that does not have the son does not have life exactly. that's what he says there wow. so this is very very important now you would think that this verse this admonition this exhortation was addressed to non-christians or wicked people or gentiles but what's interesting is that this was addressed to christians just like us to people who professed they love jesus they knew jesus Oh, friends, do you love Jesus? Oh, yes, I love Jesus. I sure you love Jesus. Oh, yes, I love Jesus. And why do you love Jesus? Because uh. he first loved Oh, why do you love Jesus? This why I, I love, love Jesus. Jesus. Because he first loved me. That was bad. How we <laughs> right there. But anyways, <laughs> the opposite of not loving Jesus is loving death. Now, there are those who do not love Jesus and have nothing to do with him publicly. These, the Bible teaches, they will all perish and they shall not be found any longer. And that truth is very obvious. But those who the Apostle Paul is most referring to are those who profess to love Jesus, but in secret deny him. To these he says, if any man does not love Jesus, let him be equally accursed as those who never knew him or who denied him publicly. Do you know what, what, um, what's my, my greatest fear when it comes to following Jesus? What it says mean? that those who follow Jesus and brings a reproach on his name, it were better if they never had known him. Like, like he says of John, uh, not John, of the Judas. Jesus says it were better if he was not born. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's what he says in the scriptures. Where? And then also speaking of those who hurt the faith of little children, mm -hmm. it were better if a stone was hung on their neck and they were sunk into the sea. It were better they never existed. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, it's a very scary thought. And so if any man love not the Lord Jesus, and this is a commentary here, uh, taken from Benson commentary, right? It says that, you want to read that for me actually? Yeah, so it says, If any man love not the Lord Jesus in sincerity but secretly alienated from him in heart, mm -hmm. while he calls himself his servant, preferring some secular interest of his own to that of his divine master, if anyone be an enemy of Christ's person, offices, doctrines, or commands, let him be anathema maranatha. Anathema signifies a thing devoted to destruction, mm -hmm. and it seems to have been customary with the Jews of that age, when they had pronounced any man anathema, mm. to add that Syriac expression, Maranatha, that is the Lord cometh, namely to execute vengeance upon it. Right. We may add further here, Anathema Maranatha were the words which, with which the Jews began their greatest excommunications, whereby they not only excluded sinners from their society, but delivered them to their divine sharing or an anathema, mm. that is to eternal perdition. Mm. This form they used because Enoch's prophecy concerning the coming of, uh, of God to judge and punish the wicked began with these words, as we learn from Jude, who quotes the first sentence of that prophecy, um, uh, 1 Corinthians 16, verse uh, 14. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, since the apostle denounced this curse against the man, who while he professed subjection to Christ, mm -hmm. was secretly alienated from him in his heart, mm -hmm. it is as if he had said, Though such a person's wickedness cannot be discovered and punished by the church, yet the Lord at his coming will find out mm. and punish him with eternal perdition. Right. This terrible curse the apostle wrote in his epistle to the Corinthians, because many of this fact of the faction, but especially their leader, had shown great alienation of mind of mind from Christ. Again, this is from uh, the Benson commentary. Very interesting perspectives. Now, yeah. it's very easy in the 21st century to profess Jesus and secretly deny him. Yeah. 
It's easy to say I'm a Christian on Facebook or I'm a Christian on Instagram or even profess and do great things in the name of Jesus. But then are you truly following Jesus? Do you truly love Jesus? And we'll get to that word love. What does it mean to love Jesus? In the end, we will put everything together. But as we continue, like I've mentioned, Paul was writing to Christian people who profess to love Jesus and follow him in everything. So he's saying to them, if you do not keep the profession of your faith, mm. woe be unto you. And this correlates to what he said in the Hebrews. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, it says, The just shall live by faith, that most famous verse. Famous verse. But what follows after that? It says, But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Wow. The word of God warns us many times to be alert. Lest we what? We fall. We fall. Today we'll be looking at what can equip us from falling and becoming anathema. In 1 Corinthians 16.13, we find the three basic principles to avoid spiritual slumber and falling. The words of the apostle instructs us in 1 Corinthians 16.13, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. One of the commentators has suggested that the apostle is actually saying the same thing in all these verses. And so you should not be surprised when they unify together as one thing, one instruction given to us. All right, now, when we study, let's look at the first part, which is, I guess, the most important part. Watch ye, or watch. The word watch is used over 23 times in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And in all cases, it is used in connection with the second coming of Jesus. Now, this gives the words context. We are to watch therefore, for we do not know the day that our Lord cometh. Mm -hmm. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken. This is in Matthew 24, verse 42 to 44, where Jesus is basically emphasizing on the fact that as Christians, mm -hmm. we need to watch. Be watchful. Yeah, and um, when I was reading this verse uh, using... Uh, in Galatians, I think Paul says, "Wear the armor of what of God." Right, and Ephesians six, yes. Yeah, Ephesians. Ephesians. I mean, so what do we use as a weapon? The sword. The the word of God. It's a exactly. sword. Exactly. Yes. So, one of the ways to watch, one of the ways to be alert, mm -hmm. is through the reading and the meditation upon the word of God. 
That, that's that's very very important point. We are going to continue with that. I just want to also point out that, like you said, he's referring to to soldiers, right? Mm. And and basically, we may we may now say that even though the apostle Paul is using this metaphor of watching, it is quite confident that uh, evident rather that he's using it in the context of a battle, and he's speaking of um, an army of soldiers that always needs to be alert lest they be attacked by the enemy. In the same sense, Peter, for example, says, "Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a rolling lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour." Mm. This warning is against giving in to the devil's temptations. So, what are we to watch for? Number one, we are to watch against the enemy's temptations, like a soldier. Yeah, he watches against the enemy. And not Ooh, just watches; t- he's, he always has his weapon by his side, which is. The word of God, and on the point of temptations, yeah, if there is the best way, the best uh, option we have at fighting temptations, it's the word. It's the word of God in prayer, because what did Jesus do? He well, answered every Satan's temptation with it, it is, is written. written. If Christ Himself hmm. used the word of God, all right, how about us? We don't even know the word of God. So reading the word of God and meditating upon it is really important to be able to fight the temptation that uh, surrounds us every day. Wow, that's a, that's a very important point to raise, Roderick. And and we are, we are going to conclude with that as well in the end. The armor of God. That's the best way we can watch. Now I just want to point out two things. There are two things that we are to watch for as Christians, right? One and foremost, the coming of the uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if we have this hope, he says there in uh, there it says that everyone that has this hope purifies himself, even as he is pure. And so we are to watch for any impurity or weakness that can make us fall short of that standard. So watch, expecting for him to return, but also watch, lest nothing hinders you from being ready for his coming. Wow. That's why it says here in Luke 21, verse 34 to 36, if you want to read that for us. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. And that and that day come on you unexpectedly. What day are they talking about here? The second, the second coming of Jesus. Jesus right? um, for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of of the whole earth. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all those things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. To stand, that's the point. How are you going to be able to stand? That's the whole point. Why is the apostle saying, watch ye, be strong, Mm. quit like men so that we may be able to stand before the Lord? Now, to stand though, to stand, we have to be very careful. We have to be watchful. And the reason is given there. Number one, so that we'll be able to stand when the Lord returns. But then Jesus mentions few things that can make us... Now, in in the life of a Christian, there are many things that can weigh us down as we wait for the second coming of Jesus. But let's go to the ones mentioned in the verse, for they cover every other. The first thing we are to guard ourselves against is suffering. Or as it says there, what did he say? Suffering. The first thing that we are to guard ourselves against. Drunkenness. No, no, the first carousing. before the carousing. carousing. Now, what does that mean, carousing or suffering, as in the King James Version? Yeah. The, original, the original word is headache. Now, imagine what a spiritual headache. Have you ever experienced that?
and we see that increasing more and more and so Jesus exactly. is warning them be on the guard do not be drunken with the wine of Babylon as it were with the doctrines that are not according to me because I am the true vine I give the pure grape but there's a false vine that gives another grape the fermenting grape that makes you drunk wow. as it says in uh, Jeremiah 51 that Babylon has made the nations mad Babylon has made the nations mad consider studying Babylon in Revelation and see exactly what it means but to continue is there another thing Jesus is warning us against to be aware of the cares of this <laughs> life wow. there we go the cares of this life what does that exactly mean though cares of this life I remember when we studied this was it um, anxiety yeah I think so anxiety or worry now this will be a simple thing not a simple thing but a normal thing as paying bills rent yeah. and all these things these things sometimes they get in the way in the in the way of you and your Lord and if you read Matthew 13 it speaks of the seed that falls on the wayside the seed that falls among thorns and the thorns actually choke the word and Christ referring to that he says that what chokes the word is what is the cares of this life because sometimes the word becomes non-effective when you are very stressed out about what you're gonna eat or what you're gonna do and uh, this 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 uh, thing I think we learned uh, from uh, steps to Christ uh, chapter 10 right the knowledge of God and yeah it speaks it says that um, Christians mm-hmm. right we should be the most, the the least people or the last people to be stressed, Correct. to have anxiety, because we know that the Lord, if as long as we're seeking the kingdom of God first, all of these things shall be added unto us. Correct. And that God will actually, whatever we are going through, God is by our side. And though it might not seem so at that uh, specific time. It is even so. Yeah, it is even so. Knowing that God is by your side and that He understands you, He knows what you are going through, and that He will deliver you, Hmm. should be something that actually puts a smile on our face in whatever storm we are walking through. We have to be very patient. Mm-hmm. I remember our brother shared with us a verse. I, I do not remember the reference. Yeah. But it says that let uh, it, let patience, in patience, possess your souls. One of the main, main integral part of Christian life, as we wait for our Lord Jesus, mm-hmm. is to be patient. Patience. He's the patience of the, fa- of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. Anyways, what are we supposed to do though? We have those who are struggling, and not just struggling, but those who are actually leaving the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, those who are taken or overcharged, burdened down, pressed down by the cares of this world. What are we supposed to do? Uh, let us be found as the faithful servant. It says here, who then is a faithful and wise servant? Whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give meat, to give the meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he comes, shall find him doing so. What's meat? The word in due season. Mm. Instead of being drunken, get the pure grape. Wow. Get the pure juice. Get the pure doctrine that will keep you and on the spiritual drunkenness yeah. uh, it might sound like it's just doctrine as in like uh, maybe reading a book that's mm-hmm. you know like doctrinal things but we have to know that these days the devil is working tirelessly right to get as the the devil is working tirelessly to get as many uh, impurities in our minds because remember the mind is the citadel it's the main yeah, yeah. part that if your mind is not clean the Holy Spirit cannot work in you right and the devil knows that so he tries whatever whether it's through music right mm. the things we watch 
you know the things we read as well so all all of those things if the things you are watching are reading and uh, listening to are impure right that's spiritual drunkenness that's spiritual drunkenness so yeah because it makes your spiritual life intoxicated exactly wow now in conclusion i want us to consider matthew chapter 25 right in matthew 25 jesus gives the story of the 10 virgins a parable rather and he, he wants to teach us a very powerful lesson that we are to learn and, and consider. In the parable, all the ten virgins went out to meet the bridegroom. All had lamps and vessels for oil. For a time, there was seen no difference between them. So with the church that lives just before Christ's second coming. All have a knowledge of the scriptures. All have heard the message of Christ's near approach. And confidently, they all confidently expect his appearing. Jesus is coming, they believe. But as in the parable, so it is now. A time of waiting intervenes. Faith is tried and when, they, when the cry is heard, Behold, the bridegroom, uh, bridegroom comes. Go ye out to meet him. Many are unready. They have no oil in their verses with their lamps. They are destitute of the Holy Spirit, without the Spirit of God, a knowledge of His Word is of no avail. So if you know the Word but have no Spirit, it's of no use. Because that's just intellectual, you're just an intellectual scholar. Yeah, the, the, uh, the Spirit will guide you through all truths. You can Correct. have the truth without the Spirit. Without the guidance. guidance. So the truth will actually trick you, whatever. Yeah, you can interpret it in your own ways. Exactly. Yeah. So there it says, if you want to continue that, the theory of truth. So the theory of truth, unaccompanied by the Holy Spirit, can, cannot quicken the soul or sanctify the heart. One may be familiar with the commands and promises of the Bible, but unless the Spirit of God sets the truth home, the character will not be transformed. Without the enlightenment of the Spirit, men will not be able to distinguish truth from error, and they will fall under the masterful temptations. Wow. So, having or praying for the Spirit of God is just as important as reading the Bible, because you can read all of it, mm -hmm. and, but, and like, know all the Bible and even memorize it, but without the Spirit, it's all useless. In fact, it could it, it could even be worse than not have have like read it at all in the first place. Well, that's uh, very fascinating and very very scary as well. Now, of course, this is taken from the book Christ Object Lessons. Uh, interesting. Please, I want you to hear this. If there's anything you've heard in our discussion, hear this. The class represented by the foolish virgins are not hypocrites. They have a regard for the truth. They have advocated the truth. They are attracted to those who believe the truth. They have not yielded themselves to the Holy Spirit working. That's the only difference. They love the truth. They want to share the truth. They want to hear the truth. But they have not yielded to the Holy Spirit or to the Holy Spirit working. They have not fallen upon the rock, Christ Jesus, and permitted the road nature to be broken up. This class are represented also by the stony ground hearers. You remember in Matthew 13, stony ground hearers? Yeah, when the seeds fell on the... No, no, this, well, it's, there is, it falls by the wayside, yeah. but it also falls by the stony ground. Mm. Now, the stony ground are those who hear the word and anon with joy receive it. Yeah. But when persecution or temptation arises, by and by, they are offended. Yeah. And so that's the class that we have here. They receive the word with readiness, but they fail of assimilating its principles. Its influence is not abiding. The spirit works upon man's heart according to his desire and consent, implanting in him a new nature. But, but the class represented by the foolish virgins have been content with a superficial work they do not know god they have not studied his character they have not held communion with him therefore 
they do not know how to trust, how to look and live. Their service to God degenerates into a fall. They come unto thee as the people comes, and they sit before thee as my people, and they, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them, for with their mouth they show much love, but with their heart goeth after their covetousness. Ezekiel 33, 31. The Apostle Paul points out that this will be the special characteristic of those who live just before uh, Jesus Christ uh, returning. He says, In the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own serves, uh, selves, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof. But denying the power thereof. Second uh, Timothy 3 verse 1. Very, very interesting. Like we read here, what makes me worry for myself and for other Christian friends is that the five virgins that were lost were not hypocrites. Why not? They showed a desire. They were in it almost. Well, in it. But they failed to watch. They they failed to always be ready, always. of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication now that praying always sometimes is not regarded as the armor of God but it is that's why it's mentioned here yeah. it has to be considered with all praying always praying always 
praying always, praying and without ceasing. It continues and watching thereunto watching. with all perseverance and supplication of all saints. Perseverance, patience, patience. So prayer, patience. The, it's it, it's all the armor of God. Mm. Well, Lord, help us to have the armor of God, your armor. Now, the armor of God, I, sometimes I read it and sometimes I forget about it. But w- w- what I'm realizing is you have to wear the armor of God every day just like you do your clothes. Mm. Do not forget to wear the armor of God. When you wake up in the morning, make sure you have everything. Make sure you have the truth. Make sure you have the helmet of salvation. Make sure you reconcile to God. Mm, Make sure you're praying for all people. Make sure you have the faith. Make sure you read the word. Make sure you are safe. Otherwise, you will not stand. So make sure you're watching every day. So thank you so much for your time. I hope that you enjoyed this long discussion we've had with this uh, brother, Roderick. And uh, see you tomorrow for another, um, what do you call this, episode of Evangelist the Verse. Thank you.